Hello there, I'm Skontulus, and this is Teppin Quick Take, where we give a deck one shot and see what it do. Today, we are playing the worst deck I have played in any game. The goal being to waste all of our resources on the Dynamo Prank Service and slather our opponents with honey. Eventually, they will be completely bricked on bad cards or just forced to play bad cards like we already do. It's the worst win con I have ever heard of, and that's the exact kind of thing that makes me excited to play cards. To do the meme, we've got Triple Dynamo, the coolest and wisest of all Mega Man characters, delivering the honey. The production value put into a card this bad is truly astounding. When attacking, Dynamo delivers one surprise honey box, which we want as many of as possible. So if your opponent blocks, use the first box to get yourself time for a second and third honey box. Otherwise, wait until you have two boxes stocked to start using them. To make this somewhat consistent, we have three Summon Maverick, which can also summon the OG Maverick, Spark Mandrill. You can play any other four in his place if you don't have him, but Mandrill kinda slaps as hard as his theme song. Spillover cleans up. And with that as our core, we are also playing good cards, thankfully. The new Black Evidence cards, Black Emperor, and Le Multa collect a ton of evidence for our payoffs and are much weaker adding back honey all the time. Which is the best, honestly. So because of honey, Le Multa is actually slightly better than Emperor, just by being cheaper. We also have Lord Raptor and Clavier Gavin as the deck's first genuine no reservations Good cards. <laughs> Both of these show stealers do an amazing job cracking boards and getting us back in the match after we slow things to a crawl. Lord Raptor in particular is THE board breaker, bordering on free value, while Gavin instead has a hidden effect. Once he's made his first appearance with Revenge active, Clavier turns summon minions into a decisive comeback removal spell. This is especially good when you've got all five of your fours out of the deck, so you know you will hit the turnabout. Next, moving on to our last really, really good cards, we have the new Gaviners, a card that gives us one shot, one opportunity to seize everything we ever wanted. One moment where we will let it slip because it's covered in honey. Still, it's our biggest pop-off and our very best card. New Gaviners backed up with the combo into Despair Whale Parish for 30 damage split is honestly peak black right now. But after that, you're back to covering your opponent in Mom's Spaghetti. The contrast in power between this and our actual game plan is staggering. Still, the one way Gaviners can win on the spot is if your opponent is fully bricked on the honey and out of playable units, which is nearly impossible, but made slightly easier by Elite Suspect Excella. Way too good and well put together to be pulled into such an idiotic situation. Excella's taken things in stride regardless, decimating fools before they even knew it and being the perfect final piece of hand rip to leave our opponents with complete honey saturation. As much as she deserves better, this is the ideal deck for Excella, especially when she enables our one actual game ender, Lethal Drug T-Virus. This card gives us one big chance to win. Both Excella and Mandrill in particular will decimate with this card. The last few cards just help us stall against any matchup. Third Energy and Fury on the phone protect us from banishes or steal and give us more time to slather honey. Sigma also gives us time back on the clock when he becomes the Edge Lord. And three taken down a peg is the strongest stall tool of all. Third Energy Restored is one last card and one last copy of Dynamo and Honey, giving us one last dying breath which wish to say, it's just a prank, bro! Here's the deck QR for you, and with all that said, let's do this! This time, we are up against the fairest fight we could give ourselves, ourselves! Hopefully, despite playing what's basically a slightly weaker version of their deck, we can still make this happen. 
We start things off immediately with summon minions, which you always want to do, either that or dynamo if you have them, and our opponent will block things with Lord Raptor, which will easily deal with our Spark Mandrill and anything else we could have played. We'll activate another summon minions, and that gives our opponent the opportunity to bring back their Lord Raptor, who will at least destroy himself at the end of his attack cycle. We'll get ourselves the time to get another honey box by using the one that we have, and our opponent will play down Excella, sealing our imp from our hand. They will get the decimate, and to stop them from doing that, we will activate taking down a peg, and our opponent is given the MP to use Unbearable Company, which will bring back their Lord Raptor now permanently, and they have d -imp to clear our board in the process. We at least get another Honey in there, which has got to count for something. Got to take any win we can with this deck, and at the moment we haven't spent any, uh, we haven't spent enough evidence for new governors, so we will play on Lord Raptor to get ourselves more evidence to spend, as well as La Malta to do the same, and hopefully deal with their keyboard Mary, but unfortunately, they can use the honey we've given them to survive the trade. The absolute worst feeling with this deck is when your opponent uses your awful game plan against you, and they are then able to clear our board for the second time using D-Inv, but this time they take their own board with them. Our opponent will bring back another Lord Raptor, and... We've got nothing really but honey at the moment, so we will use taking down a peg to clear their Lord Raptor. Thankfully, with no board for it to take with it, our opponent will respond with a self-destroy, and that will give us the chance to use another honey action. Hopefully, their deck is close to bricked at this point. I really wish that we could see their hand in this replay, but we just have to imagine that there's two or three honey there. We'll play down our Lord Emperor, and our opponent will play down their... Elite Suspect Excella, which will pull nothing from our hand, the absolute worst feeling for any deck except ours, and they will play down Marcellus and activate their Hero Art, which was either a ridiculous flex or just a total misinput. We will activate Summon Minions to get under our last Spark Mandrel from the deck, giving ourselves the highest power level in our graveyard we can, and to make sure we actually have three, I wasn't really counting, we will play down another Dynamo. And we will activate new Gaviners, which our opponent responds to with new Gaviners, both of us at the max value for it. Our opponent will destroy their unit, bring back another unit before their Gaviners, they probably should have saved that. And they will activate mixed up trunks to destroy our Dynamo, we will respond to destroy their, to slow down their Lord Raptor. And in the next moment, our opponent plays down Excella, the absolute most baffling worst play you can make under Gaviners, destroying their own field and not even destroying the unit they play down. I guess they might have assumed it happened in the other order, but it was a bad play anyway. We will go for our first despair of the game for massive value, getting us decisively back in the match. And at this point, I have to hope that our opponent is finally out of actions and they're able to keep cycling with Dance of Death. We just have to run them through what they have left until they only have the honey. We will play down our Lay Malta and activate one more copy of honey to really gum them up, but they're just able to activate the copy they have in their hand from us doing that. We will play down our Clavier Gavin to destroy their Skeleton Mary before it can really clear our board, and they have Marcellus, which will be a big problem to destroy, except that we have a guaranteed Gavin, which is guaranteed to go to the highest attack unit on board, and we are lucky to get the one in three that it goes to the right lane as well, and defeats Marcellus, giving them no heal in the process, since Gavin died on the trade. Now we have to go for our despair to stay in the match, we are so close to turning things around at this point, but our opponent still has plenty of gas of their own, they have 7 MP, and with Sublime Sacrifice getting them another unit back on field, we are not exactly in a winning position yet. We are able to activate our best card, which will be an easy target for their Juju, Dormaran, and their Hero Art. Thankfully, we get to keep it infected on board, which at this point in the game will actually make a much bigger difference than it ever normally does. We will play down our Excella, and we have completely bricked our opponent, it seems like. There is no unit pulled from their hand, but they are still able to use one last revival action to stay in the match at this point, and they drew in, they drew a unit off of the action. Now we just have to hope that our despair will be enough to keep us ahead by 
just enough life, we activate our third energy restored to clear our field and heal 9, but our opponent has Dance of Death to respond to it, and they are also able to respond to it using their Lord Raptor, which will defeat everything, and then Dance of Death will finish us off. Now we just need to get a bit of life, maybe heal back with Sigma, and we should be able to take the match. We play down Sigma in front of Gavin, he transforms to Ultimate Darkness, but our opponent is able to finish him after his first attack with Keyboard Mary, and we go for our last despair of the game, just barely getting in the single hit that will take the game, winning us in time by a single life point. So, should you play this deck? You know, actually, let's talk about what just happened there. I played this deck for like three weeks, and I only hit Triple Dynamo a single time in the whole history of this channel. That might be the craziest replay I've ever shown you guys. I'm still popping off about it. And after coming back to the deck after taking a break, it's actually kind of better than I thought it was. Uh, it took me a while to figure it out, but this version actually can win games. I was on like a four win streak while I was editing this. Of course, it literally cannot beat red and purple is really difficult. So just play the deck with the, the intention of spamming honey and not really the intention of winning, and you will have an amazing time. While I was still figuring this deck out, I would grind rank on a better deck just so I could tank my rank on this deck and have a blast doing it. Now that I have a good version, it's not really necessary to do that, but I still feel like I should give you guys that warning of about what you got gonna get yourself into. Even when you play it to basically perfection, this deck does have a tendency to just lose on its own. Still, I think that all adds up to my favorite deck that I've shown on this particular series, and one that you should all give a try, especially when the new card comes out to support it. I'd probably only play like one copy, because we don't really need any more honey, but it's still gonna make it more fun. And I've got a budget version for you, of course. You still need the three dynamo, though. I feel like leaving that in the budget version is still okay for this deck. And as for the next episode of TDT, we are going to be playing the newly buffed Sekia. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you subscribed. Once again, I'm Sconchulus, and I'll see you in the next one.